Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Vulnerability Time. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Um, it's so great to have y'all here. Um, my name is Trenton Epizon Rucker, and I am your host for today. And today's topics, we'll be talking about um, mental health journey, fighting battles alone, and perfectionism. Um, but we are going to be, our special guest is a therapist. Um, Darian, did I say that right? Almost. It's okay oh. though. Dar- Darian. Darian. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us, you know, your credentials. Let's hear what's going on. Yeah. So first of all, thanks for having me, Trent. My name is Darian. Uh, Darian Spencer. My credentials are licensed mental health counselor in the state of Florida. In other states, uh, the, the title for that shifts in other states i would be considered a licensed psychotherapist um i think those are the two that kind of bounce back back mm-hmm. and forth between licensed psychotherapist licensed mental health counselor so i'm i'm a therapist but a mental health counselor to be specific because there's so many therapists right like physical therapist occupational therapist yeah that's a good yeah okay so what um what made you, you know, want to pursue the route of being a mental health counselor? That's a great question. I, I think that goes into the the topic you bring up with your mental health journey. And one thing you'll learn about a lot of therapists, not to put them on the spot, but it's vulnerability time, right? To be truthful, a lot of therapists, and speaking of myself personally, I've had my own mental health journey. And through that, I I was like, wow, this is uh, a space I can have an impact in. And if we wanna slowly go through it and break it down, um, I grew up with uh, a sick mother. She was always physically sick. You know, she's a cancer survivor. She's had other diagnoses and other issues. And ever since I was little, Uh, I guess as a five-year-old or six, however old I was, I was just like, you know, one day I'm going to get older and I'm going to, I'm going to heal you, you know? So from a young age, it was in my mind, I I want to be a healer in, in the big scope, um, in the grand scheme of things. And in my mind, I thought I would go off to school and become a doctor because my mom was dealing with these physical issues. I was like, that's the kind of healer I would want to be for the world. Uh, but it wasn't for me. The coursework wasn't uh, wasn't sparking like that mm-hmm. that spark that needs to go on when you're studying something, especially when you're going to commit four years of college, four years of grad school, how many years of residency. Right. Um, but then in grad in not grad school, sorry, in undergrad, a lot of people understand there's these prerequisite courses you got to take. And mm. one is Psych 101, Psychology 101, Intro to Psychology. I took that course and I was like, whoa, the sparks are going off. I don't know if it's the teacher. I don't know if it's the curriculum, but I'm liking this. Mm-hmm. But the same thing that was going on with you know, just loving the course, the same thing that was going on at the same time as what I was learning in the course was helping me become self-aware of what was going on within myself. Mm. It started to give me the vocabulary, the language, the awareness that I was dealing with anxiety, right. that I was experiencing moments um, and episodes of depression mm-hmm. that and there was probably so much more too, but those were the two that stood out to me. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, wow. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, this just came to mind. So um, one of the things that um, I'll be, uh, that this podcast will be covering, you know, sometime in the future is acceptable mental health. And, you know, we are seeing in this um, generation or this um, day and age that, you know, anxiety and depression are a little bit more um, acceptable to talk mm-hmm. about. Right. Um, yeah, and so 
you mentioned that there is so much more that was also going on. Um, would you be willing to share, you know, a couple more mental health um, diagnoses that you were also struggling with? Absolutely. So I wasn't I wasn't officially diagnosed with anything. Not at that time. Not at the time frame I'm speaking of. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have absolutely no problem sharing. But at the same time, I'm not. Sh- Man, I'd have to do a deep reflection to to know. Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing that was more pressing that I'm like hiding. Like, oh, I don't want the world to know that part. Mm-hmm. It's just, I would say, those were the two primary things. Right. Um, to be specific, if I were to give myself a diagnosis at that time, I feel like I was struggling with uh, social anxiety. Mm-hmm whether you want to call it social anxiety disorder, I'll just say social anxiety, Mm -hmm. generalized anxiety. Uh, If you want to go into the ones that are a little less acceptable, if I really do a good job of reflecting, there may have been some tendencies of OCD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a great question, man. You've got me thinking. And then there there it goes with self-awareness again. You know, at that stage, all I could really see was maybe the easier things to spot, like anxiety and depression. Right. Sometimes those are what you see. But then if you dig deeper, it's something Mm. much more complex. And to be totally honest, I'm not sure. Right. Right. Do you would you say um, I mean, that makes one thousand percent sense. And, you know, thank you for, you know, uh, sharing that with us in your honesty. Um, would you say there was a certain moment or moments, um, in your childhood that might have triggered or, you know, started the depression, um, if that makes sense? Yes, that makes sense. So I would say, let me, let me think for a moment. You know what? There were moments in my childhood where, yes, I, I had I had experienced depression just as the mood. I wouldn't say as like the disorder mm. or the, the type of disorders that are out there for like major depressive disorder or persistent depressive disorder. Um, I wouldn't say that I had met like those quote unquote like criteria, like the, okay. the standards for that, you know? Mm. But I did, if I were to reflect, I did notice in my younger years where I might want to isolate, you know, Mm -hmm. which is a a symptom of depression. Or I might, um, or I might have like a negative self-image or negative Mm -hmm. Mm self-talk. Were you, would you say somehow, some way you were kind of like, taught to talk to yourself like that or to see yourself like that like was it comparison oh, yeah. from society family yeah it was a it was a mixture of all of that so definitely society just growing up dealing with with different different seeds society was planting in my head of what a of what a young man should be what a what a young black man should be what a young black man should look like um the masculinity pieces of it all, you know, all of that at points made me question if I was living up to society standards. Mm -hmm. And then of course, family had their own standards that, you know, you had to say like, damn, am I living up to this? Right. Which would make, which would make me potentially say things that were very critical and Mm -hmm. demeaning to myself. Mm. Then you hear it from I don't know if I necessarily heard it directly much. I'll say much. Mm-hmm. You know? Like no one was saying to me like you are a piece of trash or you suck. Like it was just the seeds they were planting. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is a bit of a vague answer, huh? No, no. I mean, this makes sense. You know what I mean? You're helping us. You're giving us some more like in-depth understanding. Yeah. Um, you know, digging deeper beneath the surface. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, so 
going back to you know your mental health journey right. and fighting battles alone um mm -hmm. do those connect uh for you and have you seen those um like go hand in hand in your life yeah absolutely so the way i like to look at it we we as a society understand physical health a little more mm -hmm. the way more i like acceptable to, yeah definitely mm -hmm. more acceptable and it's more it's more easy to empathize with someone with physical illness like they don't get much blame whereas mm -hmm. mental health sometimes people are like, like you know fault. you did something that added up to it yeah it's your fault yeah. so i'd like to say no matter how strong physically you are you're never at 100 percent, and the same goes for mental health so with me i noticed the more i dealt with it alone mm -hmm. the for lack of a better word word the worse it was yeah and what what was even more challenging and this kind of goes into the third topic it's like the thing that society has put on me forever has been perfectionism like the best be the best that was drilled in my head mm -hmm. like, be the best at everything you do mm -hmm. which is another which maybe i just internalize it as be perfect well i mean i mean that that makes a lot of sense um correct me if i'm wrong but mm -hmm. at least from my perspective um it seems like in our society you know we just see the person's success we just see the wars yeah. and accolades we don't right. see the beginning or the middle necessarily and in order right. to have an end there has to be a middle you know mm -hmm. um in order for there to be an end there has to be a beginning um and we we only see oh the the i don't want yeah the finish in a way the finished product yeah like, just yeah. like you introduced me right like tell us your 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 um credentials in my mind i'm like tell us the accolades and it's like <sighs> there's a story before that there's a story there's that like led a lot. us up to that yeah mm -hmm. yeah there's a story before that in the middle and running parallel to that you know mm -hmm. i i i've um accomplished a lot of things in the academic world mm -hmm. and sometimes that's what takes the lead right like mm -hmm. if i sign my name I, I sign right after that my credentials mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's like this is who you are you are this you're this therapist yeah let me say this for everyone to hear like oh your therapist goes through mental health stuff like if you're seeing a therapist oh they are not perfect they are not their mental health is not at 100 but to be quite frank a lot of them are worse and that's a story for another day um and that's one thing I take note of being more of a, a younger therapist, because this is a field for what you picture stereotypically is like an old wise man or an old wise woman. Mm -hmm. But so being a younger therapist and seeing my predecessors, I, I got to pick up on the things they did well that affected their mental health in a good way and the things they didn't do so well. Right. Affected them. Mm, that... But I, is powerful that's something you know i needed to hear um i never really been told you know in that way that you know honestly i don't think i've been told in general um that therapists are people they are yes. humans they are yes. humans we're mm -hmm. struggling they're struggling we're humans you know they're not um incapable of suffering right and we're um, allowed to struggle. That's the thing about mm -hmm. perfectionism. It's somewhere along the line, the world told us, or maybe we just took the message the wrong way. But somewhere along the line, we're told like, we have to show up no matter like what we're going through. Mm -hmm. like, we have to show up no matter like if you're feeling depressed or anxious, like mm -hmm. yeah. what, what blows people's mind is this new idea of a mental health day. Mm -hmm. And years ago, and still to this day, 
you you say that once, twice, three times, like, oh, you're out of here. Depending on your job structure, the business you work for, it's like, what do you mean? Right. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, that's, that's, I, I feel that, you know, 1000%. Um, wow, sorry, I'm just like reflecting on that really quick. Dude, take your time. Mm. No, this is coming from a therapist, by the way. Just see yeah. the humanity mm -hmm. um, in him. Um, he's still able to help those, you know, despite his own suffering, because he is human. Right. Um, that's huge. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, it kind of relates to this, but I know we're like on a time crunch, so I'm just gonna like ask the question. So as a therapist, would you, what is your thoughts on, like what would, you, what would be your answer on, um, is the glass half empty or half full? Ooh, so that, um, that has been a struggle for me because I, I'm always, wanting to be mindful of toxic positivity yes um and it's something a lot of people it's like a what's what's awesome is there are therapists out here speaking outside of a session so people are learning people are learning the vocabulary people are like identifying it within themselves so it's, it's kind of like a new buzzword but it's a thing toxic positivity yeah and for me i'm just a very positive person in a rational way mm -hmm. and i've had to do the work to get there like going to my own personal therapist mm -hmm. and shout out to all the therapists that are in therapy yeah i heard every good therapist needs a therapist <laughs> every therapist needs a therapist First of all, it would be hypocritical if you've never gone as a therapist. Right. <laughs> like you've never been to therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and second of all, we have to recognize that we're human and that we're we're all dealing with something. Yeah. But to go back to your question, glass half full, glass half empty. Me personally, um, I would go to say, just speaking personally, I would say my glass is entirely full. Mm -hmm. You might see it half, but I've already manifested it all the way full. Mm -hmm. It's just in the works. It's just in the making. Right. Now I can say that to myself, but if I were to tell a client that like your glass is not half empty, it's like full. We just have to, we just have to get there like mm -hmm. that can be a little to toxic if right, I'm invalidating right. what they're going through. For yes. me, the glass is half full. Um, definitely you, full. Oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry. No, that, that was what I was saying, like definitely full. Would you say, um, this is something that um, life has taught me um, yeah. recently, because um, I was asked that a lot growing up, is the glass half empty or half full? And I felt like I had to choose you know, um, and then I didn't know the word toxic positivity back then, but that's ex exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. um, at least how I see it now in life is the glass is both half empty and half full. You have to acknowledge the pain in order to see the purpose. Ooh, um, can you're it be make it amazing? Yeah, That's and awesome. so it's just yeah. like, is someone like, how about we not just acknowledge only the half empty or the mm -hmm. half full how about we acknowledge the whole glass yes. which is not negative or positive but it's honest it's with the yes. good the bad and the in between yes hmm. I don't know. you're what? gonna make an amazing therapist that's exactly so i spoke from a personal space but that is exactly what i would share with a client without telling them to adopt that philosophy i would just right. say like this is potentially a helpful way to look at it mm. Gotcha, gotcha. So a lot of work I do is through the framework of CBT, Cognitive Behavioral oh. Therapy. What yeah. about DBT? Have you ever dabbled with uh, DBT? 
I know of it. I've studied it, but I haven't applied it. Being completely honest, I do. I do have a lot of therapists who apply it, and that's the cool thing about therapy and therapists. We're kind of like doctors. You have cardiologists. You have pulmonologists. You have oncologists. You have dentists. They all kind of start from the same space, right? Medical school. Mm-hmm. But then they specialize or they branch off in a certain direction, and that's therapists. I know hypnotherapists, and people think that's just something on TV. Like, no, they actually exist. I know CBT specialists. I know. Can you、DMT、explain to us what、uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is, aka、Absolutely. CBT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Cognitive behavioral therapy. We can look at the three words,、um, mainly the two. So, because therapy is just the framework of, of which you're doing the two. So,、mm-hmm. cognitive is a fancy word, a big word for、um, pertaining to your thoughts. Cognitions、mm-hmm. means thoughts.、Mm-hmm. So, cognitive means pertaining to your thoughts, like focusing on your thoughts,、mm-hmm. and behavioral. The root word behavior, we know that's like your actions. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, we take a magnifying glass to look at your thoughts and your behaviors and how they potentially influence each other. But more importantly, they should really change the name to what it really is. We look at your thoughts, your feelings, and your behaviors, not just thoughts and behaviors. So. The philosophy in cognitive behavioral therapy is your thoughts influence your feelings, and your feelings influence your behaviors.、Mm. I, some people would say it creates the three, but I would like I just like to err on the side of influence. Right. It's like a triangle, and in in it there is a cognitive triangle.、Mm. Your thoughts. Influence your feelings. Your feelings influence your behaviors, and your behaviors influence your thoughts, and your thoughts. So it's like a cycle. And what happens is, when we identify, okay, people can identify their feelings fairly well. You're feeling sad. You're feeling unhappy. You're feeling miserable.、Mm-hmm. Was there a thought that influenced that? If there was, can we work on that thought in the way you said it?、Mm-hmm. We're looking at it as half. We're looking at it from the half-empty lens,、mm-hmm. but is there also a half full?、Mm-hmm. Can we let them live together while for sure acknowledging、mm-hmm. the half-empty? That's the most important part. We're not even going to look at the positive until we acknowledge what your true feelings are.、Oh. But once we acknowledge that. And that's just one way we can go about it. There's a there's a bunch of ways, but that's like a basic rundown. And not to go on a rant, but a lot of people would say they're sad, unhappy, miserable, or whatever feeling、mm-hmm. because of a situation that happened. Oh. But if you want to get philosophical, I would challenge. I would just challenge the thought to say. Okay, let's then say the situation influenced your thoughts,、mm. which influenced your feelings. Oh, which influenced your behaviors, and then from each behavior, there's consequences, which isn't a negative word. Consequence just means like what comes next from your behaviors. If you study for an exam, the consequence is you could potentially do much better than if you didn't study. Not a bad thing.、Mm. So that's that's my little rant on, on CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's my favorite mode modality of doing therapy. There's many, like you mentioned, DBT and others. Y'all, I know I just learned. Just changed my whole way of like how I've been thinking about consequences and certain things, like situations,、yeah. like.、Mm-hmm. Let that sink in. We just let that sink in, y'all, really quick of what he just said. Yeah. Wow. I know someone. I know I need to hear that. I know somebody needed to hear that. Yeah.、Wow. I need to hear it every time I say it because my favorite part of therapy is the introduction when a client comes in and I start to, I start to share knowledge is power. So I always like to、mm-hmm. share the knowledge part 
and then we start doing the work because mm-hmm. a lot of therapy is doing the work okay yeah. so you know as a therapist you know i think it's super incredible um super amazing you know that you do what you do um sorry mental health counselor um same thing therapist oh, same thing okay they use they use the terms entertain interchangeably yeah gotcha um i remember there was someone um that i was introducing myself as a therapist and they kind of got a little irate with me and they were like what kind of therapist and i was like what do you mean and then they were like do this occupational therapist physical this that i was like ah so now if i introduce myself instead of saying a licensed mental health counselor i would say a licensed psychotherapist mm this is this is from the framework of psychology and the psyche the mind so yeah yeah all in the same um have you you know if you wouldn't mind um can you share with us um has there ever been a time in your life mm-hmm. where you wanted to give up you wanted to quit maybe even wanted to die mm-hmm. um has there ever been a time in your life so quit and give up on life sure okay <laughs> cuz when you first said that i was thinking about like um school journey or maybe like working towards a goal but then it's clear to me that you're talking about life so well it could be all of the above as well um uh just I wanting to throw in the towel that. whether it's life yeah. um work all that in the past yeah when it when it comes to doing things i used to always feel I used to always have people in my life telling me like I'm I'm quitting early or I'm mm-hmm. quitting too soon or I'm not giving something my all just when it comes to like maybe trying something new. Mm-hmm. And as I've gotten older I have congratulated myself and gave myself a round of applause for knowing this is how I look at it knowing when it's time to pivot. Mm-hmm. That is really important. If you're doing something and you're not getting anywhere and by anywhere i mean like a sense of fulfillment doing it and you're able to pick up on when it's time to pivot and maybe go a different route that is a beautiful skill and it doesn't have to mean you're a quitter or that you gave up on something that's in the framework of trying new things now i can talk about I have ever felt like ending my life, um harming myself. I think that's important to talk about as well. So mm-hmm. ending my life honestly no, but I've been I I'll be honest to say I've been very down and sad and and in some dark places sometimes, which is totally okay for a human to experience that. It's it's normal I wish no one had to experience that but you're not you're not alone there's not anything wrong with you you're not broken it's unfortunately for for a lot I don't know I can't know if I could say all but for a lot it's a part of their experience mm-hmm. um, and that's why therapists should exist mm-hmm. you know to help people through that but in those moments I've never thought of ending my life but I'll be vulnerable to say I have thought of self-harming. Mm-hmm. I've thought of like just the thoughts or the feelings that were going on at the time. I thought I wonder if I should distract myself through something physical. Mm-hmm. I never followed through with it. but for a moment i remember in my teenage my teenage years for a moment in time that was something like that would pop in in on my mind um every every so often and it was really and if i knew about cbt back then it's like once you learn the philosophy it's cool and as i teach it i have to be very mindful of the concept of toxic positivity 
Mm. We don't we don't want to be doing that. But once right. you start learning the skills, the coping skills, and some people would say like self care, and being mindful, and being in tune with yourself, and be coming from a place of embodiment, mm. then you start to realize like okay, here are the steps I can take to care for myself in this time. Mm-hmm. So I've I've given up on plenty of things, and I I congratulate myself when I realize it's me pivoting early and knowing mm-hmm. that's not me. I'm not going to waste my time or someone else's time. Right. And when it comes to life, I haven't ever wanted to end it, but I've I I totally I totally empathize with those who do, and I totally have been there where I'm like. Maybe I should hurt myself, and that would distract me. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Mm. That's real. It's a very real thing, and um, many people come in to therapy having had suicidal thoughts or feelings, whether in the present moment, in the past. And they they share with me that I'm the first person they've shared that with. So that goes into like fighting these battles alone. Mm. Can you imagine someone wanting to end their life and feeling like they there's no one that's gonna hear them out, or they don't feel safe or comfortable, mm-hmm. or trusting in someone to can like confide in them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. For for us who have struggled with or are struggling with you know seeking counseling or therapy not Mm -hmm. saying uh folks listening um not saying that oh everything's a one size fits all for everyone um but what i'm saying is for those of us who have struggled or are struggling to who are interested in therapy wanting to Uh give it a try see what it's like but Mm -hmm. we're scared to i've been there yeah (laughs) So I yeah. say us, um, what it, as a therapist, a uh, mental health counselor, s- licensed psychotherapist, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get this right. I'm going to get this right. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's so. a lot. Applause. <laughs> um, what it. advice would you have for us um, who are scared to make this step? You know what I mean? I would say round of applause to you who's out there who recognizes they could use some support Mm -hmm. taking that so there are there's something in therapy called the stages of of change right and you are just a part of the stage like you having the whatever insert whatever feeling you want you having the blank which is what's holding you back from reaching out at the moment congratulations to you you've taken the first step and that is you've actually taken two because the first is pre-contemplation, not even realizing there is something benefited, beneficial from for you going to therapy. So you've already crossed stage number one. You're on stage number two, which is contemplation. Now saying, yeah, you're in the contemplative stage. Stages of change. Yeah. Stages of change. So now you're like, I need, I I could benefit from going to therapy, but like most, most thoughts that come to mind, they take a while. They take a while to like come to fruition. They're like planting a seed. You plant a seed and you want to see fruit, but it's going to take some time. You got to water it. And then you see a little sproutling. A couple years, you see some fruit. Uh, You see a tree, then you see a fruit, but it takes some time. Most people who come to therapy, they've been thinking about it for months. Mm. They've been thinking about it for years. It's usually a mental health crisis that leads many people to start therapy. It's like, I work with a lot of people struggling with anxiety. Mm. For them, it's having an anxiety or panic attack, which which says, okay, it's like I have no choice now. I felt like I was going to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what it takes for many people unfortunately and i love the era we're going into because now that's not the case a lot of people are like 
I don't even know if I need therapy, but a lot of people are talking about it. It could be beneficial for everyone. So yeah. I'm trying it out. I've had those phone calls. Right. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell it like this to the people that are listening. If you are thinking about starting therapy um, and there's a fear or there's, there's something that's stopping you, give yourself a round of applause because you're already a couple of steps on the journey. Second thing I would say, um, hmm, how can I put this? So just start looking, just water that seed that's already planted. Go to Psychology Today. That's the number one website when searching for a therapist. Psychologytoday.com. There are other ones like um, Inclusive Therapist. For those that want to make sure they're represented, um, whether you are a part of the BIPOC population, that's Black, Indigenous, People of Color. If you are a part of the LGBTQIA population, they are therapists that will hear you, will see you, will validate you, will support you. That is so interesting. You can kind of create a therapist. You can say, I'm looking for a blah, 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 blah. And it will come up. We're here. Start with your Google. Start with psychology today. If you want someone specific, um, Google it. Mm. It'll come up. We're here for you. The only thing is important, we're state by state. So we're licensed by a state. We can't see, I can't live in Alabama and see someone in Florida mm -hmm. unless I'm licensed um, in one or both of those states. Mm -hmm. So for those listening, I am in Florida. If you do not want to start therapy with me and you just need like to take another step, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to me on my website or my phone number. I'm sure Trenton would put that somewhere. And what all therapists offer is we offer a free consultation. Get some things off your chest. See what it feels like. It's like a free trial. See what it feels like. And no one's pressuring you. We're just here to support you. So Aww. there's something out there. Yeah. I just love that. That was very resourceful. Thank you so much. Yes, I will um, have his contact information, um, his Instagram. His Instagram is really inspiring, y'all. Um, Thank you. It's what made him stand out. Yeah. <laughs> um, all of his information will be below in the episode description if y'all would uh, check that out. I highly recommend it. Um, and also, folks, you know, you know, something I've never really noticed is that stages of change model. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you said, just that contemplation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a huge step. You know it's what I mean? Huge, so like, y'all, if it's in the back of your head, if you're, if there has been a resistance towards that, it's it's proof that it's there, correct? Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is already a huge step that y'all have taken. Um, proud of y'all. Um, and I'm exactly. sure Darian would say, yeah, yeah. Um, did I say your name right? Absolutely. <laughs> you okay. I suck at names. I remember okay. faces though. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not really, um, fun fact. I didn't know how to pronounce my own name until like high school. I would just do it different ways until I had an English teacher, like tell me phonetically how I should be pronouncing it. And at that point it would be hypocritical of me to say like, you're not pronouncing my name right. Get it right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to do it. So I'm not, I'm not big on it, but at the same time, I'm, I've dealt with a lot of people who are like, no, you got to stand on what your name is. Mm -hmm. Tell people if they say it wrong, tell them you said it wrong. And that's a whole thing in therapy too. That goes into being a, a people pleaser or um, a per I think that's the best category to put that in. A people pleaser, like, yeah, you got it right. Don't worry about it. Mm, it's okay to um, say like no it's it's really this thing but no big deal right gotcha mm -hmm. gotcha darian darian will be back y'all yeah. <laughs> by the way um definitely have a lot more to talk about um darian's on his 
awesome, awesome guy shit. So <laughs> we're on a bit of a time crunch. Um, oh yeah, so yeah. I, I, I got, I got a client right after this, but um, yes, we want to thank him though for taking, making the time for us to learn from him, hear from him, hear his stories, hear experiences, his, his wisdom. I know y'all. I know y'all heard a lot of that there. There was definitely that wisdom there. Um, just passing it along. Knowledge is power. Yeah. Thank you, you know, for what you do now, but also thank you for the moments where it was, it was hard. It wasn't easy. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. easy to get the applause on the stage, but we don't see yeah. what led up to the stage. So I want to thank you. Um, yeah. I don't know, you know, all of your experiences and all of what led up to what you do now and where you are now, but yeah. I want to applaud that. Thank you. Um, I really do. Um, and so I'm trying to normalize that at, as, at least within myself. Um, yes. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, the pedestal doesn't really, it's pedestals aren't permanent, y'all. We're humans. Pedestals will break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like we, I just feel like, you know, therapists or like, well, <laughs> mental health counselors, um, well, in this case, um, from my experience, it's, it's just they are true definitions of leaders to me because um, a leader is someone who is not perfect. A leader is someone who does not stand tall 24 seven and never fall. That's yes. not a leader because that's not honest. That's not real. That is not vulnerable. Right. And thanks to Darian, this is awesome. This is just inspiration here, your motivation this is vulnerability time and i want to thank y'all so much for listening and once again darian's information will be um in the episode description below and i look forward to seeing y'all next friday and we look forward to seeing darian again we will definitely have darian on the show again awesome. um, thanks darian say bye to everyone thanks everyone thanks for listening we're here for you us therapists <laughs>